I just got the iPhone 10 silver 256 gigabyte. We've been waiting for this one for a while. Unboxings and first impressions, let's go. Oh, what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to the iPhone 10 silver unboxings and first impressions. Now we've been waiting for this one for quite some time and I finally got my hands on one here. This is actually day one launch day of the iPhone 10. By the time you're watching this video, it might be a different day, but taking a look at the box, very clean, very simple Apple style setup. We're used to this same thing we've seen on the iPhone 8, the same thing we've seen on the iPhone 8 plus here and you can see they got this easy pull tab so anyone can really unbox this thing no problem whatsoever but getting into the box what we really want to see here is what we get inside of this thing and of course we're presented with the usual apple stickers the apple book you know the little stuff we're going to read when maybe we're taking a number two or doing something like that we do have the pin where you can go ahead and open up the sim card the sim card tool that's nice to see here and here is this illustrious iphone 8 250 56 gigabyte that everyone's been waiting for and there's the plastic peel and it's no longer smudge free so here is the headphones the earbuds we do have the dongle as well as a lightning port and a brick which is pretty pathetic when it comes to how long it takes to charge with that brick so here is the design of the iphone 10 you can see it's pretty you know glassy just like the previous version taking it over to the right side you can see we do have a pretty large home button now on the iphone 10 as well as a very shiny silver side so if you really like that shiny look kind of similar to what we've seen on a galaxy s8 you're getting it here on the rear you do see a fairly large and now vertical dual camera setup this does have portrait mode telephoto lens just like 7 plus and 8 plus and on the front we do see that all screen kind of short i would say and a little bit chubby design on the front if you ask me that's just my first impressions my first take look very similar to like an iphone 8 but a little bit taller now on the left side you do see our classic silent switch we do have ourselves the volume up and the volume down taking it down to the bottom of the iphone 10 you will see no headphone jack which i never really like to see in any smartphone when they omit headphone jacks but this is apple's thing we do have a lightning port it would have been nice to see usb-c but USB-C is not enabled here but going around it's just basically a very shiny very simple small shortened version of like I would say an iPhone 8 plus it sits right in the middle between an iPhone 8 and an iPhone 8 plus so this is like the middle phone when it comes to its ergonomics and size so booting this thing up for the first time it actually boots up extremely fast with that a11 bionic chipset and it's three gigabytes of RAM here you're gonna see just how fast we do get to the launch screen where we start setting up the phone and doing stuff like that so you are going to see the apple logo with a black background no matter what iphone 10 you get here and you can see it does say hello and now we do swipe up from the bottom this now has gesture controls built in with the software but while we're waiting for this to set up let's take a closer look at the notch so you can see up at the top it sits dead in the center and it might be an eyesore to some but so far it actually hasn't bothered me too much it looks like the screen is so large that you're probably not going to have your eyes going directly to that too much because because there's so much screen on this phone. So Face ID seems to work fairly well on this basic setup here. It seemed to set up like it was nothing. Actually, the setup process was a little bit smoother than what I seen with the iris scanner on the Samsung device with the Galaxy S8. So that's a good sign so far. It looks like this is gonna be a little bit more accurate than that setup there that you have on the Samsung device. Now over here on the setup, you will see pretty much the same setup process, but there's a few things they mention here and you're going to want to use your tips app with this phone because there's new gesture controls in this device which makes it feel a lot different than prior iPhone so swiping down from the bottom is basically where you're going to control your new app switcher but taking a look at the lock screen you can now access the flashlight right there as well as hit the camera icon to go right into your camera which is definitely going to be two handy practical controls for your iPhone 10. so getting in you can see face ID definitely works pretty accurately you can see it unlocks pretty fast and it really depends on the lighting but it looks like it's gonna be a two-step process to get into the phone so it might not be faster 
than Touch ID. Taking a closer look and inspection at that AMOLED display supplied by Samsung definitely looks more like an iPhone display than the popping colors of say like a Galaxy S8 or a Note 8. So that's my first impression so far. You have to pull down from the top right now to get into control center and the top left to get into the notification panel. This feels a lot more like an Android device. So iPhone users who are used to pulling your control center from the bottom thinking it's different from notifications at the top. That's definitely different here. It feels a little bit more like Android. But overall, I gotta give the display a win. It definitely looks like the best iPhone display I've ever seen. However, it's gonna be tough to see if this thing beats the best on the market here. So going into the multitasking switch tray, you now have to kind of hold it and half press in the middle to get to this card view. Kind of reminds me of the Palm OS days, but you can see right there at the top, we do have these red icons that allow you to go ahead and close them out, or you can just swipe them away like you're used to. Now to take a screenshot on the iPhone 10, it's a little bit tricky. You do have to hit the volume up and you have to hit the power button to take a screenshot and to turn this thing off, you have to hit two buttons. You have to hit the volume down and the power button button so this is going to be a steep learning curve for those people out there who are not very you know techy but anyone who has used a lot of smartphones use tech a lot this is going to be fairly easy to learn i think for most users like that now the portrait mode does come to the rear but what's nice is you do have portrait mode now on the front so the iphone 10 allows those users who want to use portrait but never had somebody around to take those portraits to use a selfie camera to do that so that's cool to see now the animoji feature is the new feature that basically takes an animoji and you could talk to it record whatever you're saying and it kind of mocks what you're doing it's going to be a very expressive way to use emojis here on the iPhone 10. So let's quickly take a look at the iPhone 10 versus the iPhone 8 Plus. You can see very similar in terms of that glass rear. However, we get a vertical camera. Now, in terms of size though, very different. I think this is why a lot of people have been waiting for the iPhone 10. It's very different. We might even see a plus size iPhone 10 next year, or maybe an iPhone 11, whatever they're going to call it. We'll have to see how the naming scheme goes. But you can see the iPhone 8 definitely looks closer in terms of its size and proportions. So the iPhone 8 definitely closer in size. If you like that size of device, you're going to love what you get here with the iPhone 10 because it crams a bunch of screen and that iPhone 8 sized body, if you ask me. So what are my overall first impressions of the silver? over 256 gigabyte iPhone 10. It's light, it's got a shiny border, it's got an all screen design. Reminds me a lot of the Samsung Galaxy S8. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys right now. But overall, we're gonna have to question and see if this still is worth a thousand dollars. Is this phone really worth a thousand dollars? That's really what I wanna test and review. But I wanna hear what you guys got to say. Drop your comments, questions, the videos you would like to see down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to all of your questions. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Nick here, helping you to master your technology and pace.